All right, so here's the book. This is the beginning of the book. This is where we are. This is the front of the book. This is where we are. Huh? Yeah, show the front. Yeah, you can open it. It says, and no. Why? Okay, that's weird. All right. Desolation, which is a noun that means deprivation, companionship. Deprivation of companionship. So if you're deprived of something, you don't have it. Deprivation of companionship, emptiness, sorrow, and woe. Homebody. Spring wipes her muddy boots on the mat and settles in to stay. Personification. Good. Everything blooms. Geese migrate north and we migrate back to mom's house. No long distance treks, no more, no more long distance treks, no more exploring without George. Staying put, staying home. Early morning. Reach back towards sleep, fleeting images of dream. My mother's face, safety, comfort. Images recede, chest constricts, arms wrap around ribs, ribs wrap around hollowness, ignore grief. Hope dream returns. Fingers of sunshine stretch over the eastern horizon, touch tops of trees, squirrels scamper up slender aspen, leap onto the roof, tumble and chatter across shingles. George shoves open the door and nudges his nose under my grumpy elbow. Stop it, George. Go away. I'm sleeping. He puts his head on the edge of the bed, pushes his big square brow against my shoulders and whimpers. I groan. Why do we have to be why do you have to be so pushy? He rolls his brown eyes up toward me, wags his little tail, sigh. I stand on my back porch in my pajamas. George explores the yard, sniffs around bushes, and occasionally lifts his nose to smell the air. A V of Canada geese flies overhead, honking. I shade, shade my eyes, watch their descent toward the lake. One at a time, they stop flapping their wings until they are gliding, ba gliding banking in formation, circling toward the low the treetops out of sight. I remember my dream, the palpable mother connection, I wonder if geese feel connected in harmony as they fly. Is the feeling of being connected to another creature a universal feeling across species? Is that love? Picnic. I need to cheer up. Even George thinks so. I pack a lunch and grab my hiking pole. At the last moment, minute, I shove the gun in my bag. The next time I meet a pack of hungry dogs, I want a better weapon than beef jerky. We walk neighborhoods west. We walk neighborhoods west of the lake, past the supermarket, down the bike path toward the creek. George alternates between running ahead and trotting along in step with me. My heart rate increases. My spirit lifts. The path leads us away from neighborhoods until we are walking along the banks of the creek. Mature cottonwoods shade the trail. Damselflies flash bright blue and iridescent in the dusty sunlight. A bull snake slides out from under a shrub, stretches across the path, slinks off into the grasses on the other side. I make George sit and stay until the snake is gone. Dad taught me which snakes are dangerous. I feel lucky whenever one passes my, crosses my path. I miss Dad. The creek does a sparkly dance. A robin flits back and forth to her nestlings, mouth open, mouths open and ravenous. A great blue heron stands stock still on the far bank, plumed head poised like a statue, waiting for unsuspecting fish. Three turtles sun themselves on a partially submerged log. A dragonfly buzzes the surface of the pool in the shallows near the shore. We bushwhack down to the creek bank, exhale a long, deep breath. George arches his back, settles down, nose twitching. We eat our lunch and watch the creek tumble over itself. I remind George not to drink and pour some, him some water. I scratch the st spot near between his ears and close his eyes, rolling over to offer his belly. I stretch out, lean on him, and watch the clouds wander across the sky. What does it all mean, George? George picks up his head. I put a piece of grass between my thumbs and whistle. Is there something I'm supposed to be doing that I'm not? Is it my fault we haven't been rescued yet? Really, truly. I am not particularly religious, never given much thought to whether God exists or let alone whether God pays any attention to my little life. 
lying on my back in this beautiful place surrounded by so many wild birds and animals, I'm trying to really truly understand how alone we are. This day, like a million other days I lived before evacuation, like any minute a cyclist will come riding around the bend or a pair of runners will jog right on by, the animals around me are living their lives just as they always have. Nothing has changed for them. Do I look as natural to them as they do to me? We're all just trying to survive. Does that make me wild? Can one lone girl be a civilization all by herself? Two whole years, and I haven't seen another person since the looters left town. Is there really no other woman, no other human being for hundreds of miles or thousands? How long can this last? What would I be doing right now at this very moment if the evacuation had never happened? A freshman in high school, maybe taking honors classes, studying for final exams, shopping for a dress to wear to the dance, kissing someone for the first time, maybe, or playing on the soccer team, scoring the winning goal, state championship match be, being lifted onto team shoulder, teammates' shoulders, paraded across the, pit, the pitch in victory, my whole family cheering and jumping with pride. I reach into my pocket, my brother's book report. But there's another thing that makes her the challenge girl. She has to be alone on the island for 18 years. 18 years. 18 years. Am I capable of surviving alone for 18 years? Trevor would be out of high school by then. The twins would be in their 20s. I would be 30. Even if our food and supplies could last that long, is it possible so much time could pass before people return? Possible? Maybe. Conceivable? No. Surely the government wouldn't need that much time to address whatever imminent threat caused the evacuation. George is at least six or seven. How long do Rottweilers live? The thought of life without him is unfathomable. If something's unfathomable, what does that mean? Unbelievable. Unthinkable, unbelievable. You can't imagine it. It's just fathom means to think. Yes. Everything is still. We follow the creek path west, twisting and turning with the water until, unfold, until unfolding across a footbridge. A hawk soars on air currents. A prairie dog chirps an urgent warning. We trek up and over a hill, down past the cemetery, to the fork at the road that leads to Lewiston, the little neighboring town. We lock, walk along the shoulder of the road, but soon realize our foolishness and walk right down the center on the double yellow line. Imagine, George, we're part of the Rose Parade and this line is the parade route. We have to follow it exactly until we get to the very end, but be careful not to step in horse manure. Think of what those marching band members had to walk through when they follow those horses every year. Kind of hard to march and play a tuba while watching for horse turds at the same time. George prances beside me, glancing up, wagging his stumpy tail. A few more miles and the yellow line leads us to the intersection of the cemetery road and Lewiston's main street. South toward the baseball diamond, nothing moves. Nothing toward the businesses. Everything is still. Come on, buddy. Let's see what's happening. Lewiston. The French bakery, the guitar shop, the outdoor ice skating rink. I learned how to skate there as a little girl holding dad's hands, clinging to his legs when the evening train rushed by on the tracks east of the rink. I conjure the hot, sweet scent of kettle corn, the weight of heavy, wet mittens. Across the street is the carousel, endangered tigers, Elephants, sea turtles, arctic wolves. I circumnavigate the platform from animal to animal. George picks his way along the planks of the floor behind me. I climb into an old-fashioned sleigh pulled by two polar bears. George sniffs the giant panda nearby, then settles on the floor at my feet. Sounds of ca cal cali caliope, caliope music. Young mothers and fathers lifting tiny children into the animals' backs, laughing when the carousel jolts to life. I will the wooden slats of the ceiling to rotate slowly at first, then faster, until I get dizzy and close my eyes. Carousel picks up speed. Everything pulls slightly towards center, so she's imagining this right now. World whirls. Animals come alive. Music grows louder. Dissonant animals growl and snort. Carousel twists and dips, drops hard and fast, jerks me awake. Twilight is fading. The railroad tracks gleam. In the light of the rising moon nearby... A cricket sings. George lifts his head and cocks his dark ears. My head still sw swirls, but the earth is at least is still. My muscle remembers the pack of dogs and my senses turn to tune to th 
threat. I step down from the carousel. George stands and stretches, jumps down after me. Everything is quiet. Darkness settles around us. Even the cricket is still. Well, Georgie, we better head home while we have the moonlight. I'm sorry I kept us out so long. George dances a circle and falls into step. I climb the embankment to the railroad tracks. We walk in silence, watching the moon rise, timing our strides to the span of the railroad ties. Bats dart and dodge high above our head. A great horned owl hoots, its mate answers in the distance. Gravel crunches beneath our feet. We turn off the tracks and head toward the path. Ten more minutes and we are back again in our own neighborhood, heading for home.